the three candidates that I find the most interesting um, um, are should should be DeSantis, but DeSantis has gone from this this Fed defying governor who unlocked earlier than anybody else and challenged the the tyrannical orthodoxy of of Fauci and all those guys and and if if I saw that DeSantis right now that would that would be a pretty intriguing thing but but he's been um, um, kidnapped by the GOP and he's he's doing a lot of performative things like he's doing performative culture war things mm-hmm. and he's just not as interesting as he used to be. Um, uh, it's also still a long way away from the election. Like yeah. A lot can happen between now and November 2024. Vivek Ramaswamy, who was on the show, That's he's right. he's pretty interesting. Um, he's got some um, really big ideas that I like, and then he's got a couple, uh, one of which we talked about on the show, that I that I really don't like. I he wants to double down on the war on drugs, and and it's it's. This is the worst idea that we've been trying <laughs> for a generation, and it's just not working. Yeah, it's like the definition of insanity is doing the same thing over and over again and expecting different results. Um, now, now we've also you and I and and our team we we talk about RFK quite a bit. Yeah, and um, he's clearly thinking about a potential um, third party run, right? Because he's getting frozen out of the debates, and he's he's probably not going to overtake Biden because the machine is too strong. Um, but you know, we were at Porkfest, and RFK gave a speech there that I that I, I thought it was a fantastic speech. And he was at Freedom Fest, mm-hmm. and and he's clearly courting libertarians, and and at at a at a basic level. I mean, if you if you want to believe that he's changed his mind on some pretty f- important things at a basic level, his position against endless war and his his position against lockdowns and medical tyranny those are pretty attractive. I'd love to hear more candidates talk about that stuff. Well, this brings me to a rather softball question from a Twitter user called Bishop, who says, is this the time to empower third parties and independents to run for office? Which I feel like I know what your answer that is going to be. Yeah. But I want to delve in a little bit to find out, like, how is that possible and what can we do? Well, to- the, well the answer is yes, but but how is how is everything? And I've, I've talked about this for years. Um, you know, we just had um, one of the libertarian candidates on the show um, who's running for president and... The problem with third parties is that the, the playing field between the two parties, the duopoly, the Republicans and the Democrats, they, for instance, they have immediate ballot access. Mm-hmm. Um, if RFK created a party tomorrow, he would have to spend an insane amount of money without any guarantee of success to get on the ballot on, in all the 50 states. I, I think every state has different rules for this, but it's not like he can just show up on election day unless you think magically a write-in candidate is is going to win a majority i i think i think it's virtually impossible under the current rules for a non-republican non-democrat to win but that system is going to break and the question is when 